Ugh. Hey, what's up? It's um Thursday afternoon. I'm about to go write my linear systems test. According to our lecturer, Dr. Van Fake, he says this is our most important course in second year and perhaps even in undergraduate because it's all about filters and linear systems and how the signals uh, are used in electricity and electronics and that and how they how you modulate those signals and that and it's really interesting. Uh, I've done a lot of work. I've actually had to. Uh, actually had to start a new exercise book. I've been doing so much practice um, for this test. But yeah, I'm really excited and I'm really ready actually for a change. It's probably the module that I've battled with the most this semester. Um, but I thought just in this video I'd go over quickly some of the more interesting stuff we've done in the module and why it's apparently so important for like computer and electronic and electric engineers going forward in the degree. <laughs> So just taking like a rough overlook at the module, um, there's a decent amount of maths involved. The Fourier series and the Fourier transform are probably two of the biggest uh, parts of the module, and that's, I think I've explained it before, but that's using mm, the sum of different sinusoids to represent different signals. So if you have like a pulse wave like that, you can represent it using a certain amount of uh, sinusoids. That's a terrible example. But... Oh yeah, the better way to explain it is if you have a um, you can have a sinusoid, big sinusoid like that, and then another of smaller sinusoids like that, like that, and eventually it brings down and it eventually equates in that pulse wave, and it's a powerful um, way of representing uh, pulses and signals in that using sinusoids because sinusoids are really important because they generate uh, you can generate sinusoids quite easily with function generators um, in electricity. Also very important is the frequency domain and representing things in the time domain and shifting things to represent them in the frequency domain. So obviously if you have a um, sinusoid like this in the time domain against time and then in the frequency domain you just have it, you just have the two fundamental frequencies that it oscillates at in the frequency domain from the time domain. I'm not doing a good job of explaining it, it's a very complicated concept, but uh, that's quite important. And then all the other stuff, I'm just looking at uh, one of the past exams here. Uh, you know, like signal analysis, odd and even components of signals, energy and power of signals, um, continuous or discrete um, time signals, um, and the difference between those. The impulse function, um, which is a, just a, a pulse, uh, and an instant that goes to infinity but has the area of one is quite an important mathematical concept and so you kind of get the gist that in the module there's a lot of abstract mathematics that you then have to bring into the real world and use to represent like weird stuff that happens in the real world with electricity. So then the zero state and zero input response you know uh, your system or your signals normal response to an input in the absence of any other inputs and then if it does have different inputs how does it react according to that the transfer function is quite important that's uh, h of s is equal to y s over x of s um, and so you obviously need Laplace for that and then all of the Laplace transforms that you need to know this is the Laplace table and the transforms and that we get given these tables in the tests but you need to know how to use them and converting once again between the time and the frequency domain or the, the t and the s the Laplace domain uh, back and forth between those um, we did that in 256 last semester, our maths course, but they taught it uh, much better in your know, eye. Funnily enough, in this linear systems course, they actually are much more adept at teaching mathematics. Maybe it's because they do less of like the hardcore strange theory and they use it for more practical applications, but I've definitely found the maths to be better taught, at least in, in the ELI. Yeah, and then also Fourier transforms and Fourier series, I've mentioned that already. Um, stability, vivo stability, that's just to do with your characteristic roots and your characteristic um, functions, more transfer functions, more Laplace, um, shifting a function in time, compressing it, making it longer, um, that's kind of pretty standard mathematical analysis. Once again, the zero input response, convolution, I still don't quite understand that, uh, hopefully it doesn't come up in this test. There are pulse trains, different ways of representing it. Um, Bit of like I, I made the mistake at the beginning of the uh, year. Beginning, be, I made the mistake at the beginning of the semester of referring to this as our circuits course, which it's really not. There's only a tiny bit of circuits in the course, um, and then it's to do with 
uh, Laplace, the Laplace transform circuit, and how you can use Laplace to represent circuits using uh, conductors, not conductors, capacitors and inductors, and how those things are used um, for signal analysis. We have a, quite an important section of Bode plots, which are, which is all what these notes are for. Bode plots are used to represent the phase and frequency domains, um, and the way different signals uh, and transfer functions are represented using those graphs. Those graphs look like this. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it's pretty pretty straightforward to draw, and there's a lot of marks for that. So that's hopefully where I'm going to pick up a lot of my marks in my test today. But uh, yeah, this is for the, the amplitude, and this is for the phase uh, diagrams. And you can see them pretty simple once you get once you know what's happening. But that's quite important for representing different signals and different transfer functions. And then our practicals, which were actually a really big part of this module, and that took us so 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 much time, were also very interesting. Um, the practicals mainly focused around filters, and Dr. Van Beek has called this the filter course because all of these, all of the signal analysis and signal transforming and signal processing and that can be put under the label of filtering. So if you have a symbol, if you have a signal, how do you translate it and convert it so that you only use this part of the signal, or how do you use the Fourier transform and the um, frequency domain to isolate a certain part of a signal and filter it out, like if you've got a signal uh, that's coming from a microphone and you've got some noise in the background and you need to isolate that noise and remove it from the signal, how do you do that? And you do that using mathematical functions. And so our practicals mainly focused around the, really the filter part of the course. Um, and so practical one was all about the Fourier series and representing uh, different signals using sinusoids. And then the second practical uh, was passive RC, RL, and RLC filter circuit analysis. So designing different filters uh, and different circuits to do, diff to do different things to different filters. That was really interesting. Uh, it took ages to type out the maths, as I'm sure you remember. But I really enjoyed that practical. And then our last practical was the realization of analog filters. So, uh, Butterworth, Chebyshev, low pass, high pass, band pass filters. Um, I'll put a few examples over there so you can kind of get what I mean. When you run a signal through that, it's got to ch cut off different parts of the signals at different times and it's got to let certain frequencies through of the signal and not others. And so that was really interesting and I enjoyed going through the maths of that and uh, drawing the graphs in Python and that. And, the practicals definitely helped me to have a better understanding of like the really, at times, advanced, complicated mathematics that was going on uh, in this module. And so you can kind of understand why Dr. Van Weyck, our lecturer, said that this is probably one of the most, definitely the most important course we do this year, and one of the most important courses that we do in computer engineering in undergraduate. Um, and so, as I said, this has been my toughest module this semester. Uh, maybe not this year, just because the practicals and that make it a bit easier to, to do well. And I've done lots and lots of past problems and tutorial problems and uh, you know prob uh, problems in preparation for the exam today. So I feel confident for that, not like some of my other modules where I just showed up and had my ass handed to me. But uh, if the modules in the future are all based on this theory and that, then definitely in for a wild ride, because the mathematics is complicated and today is the first day <laughs> that it's finally starting to come together. I mean, I still don't understand everything, like graphical convolution. I can't get the limits of integration for that. I don't understand. Um, so, like, today is finally the day that I... The first day that I'm actually understanding some of these concepts, like, completely and where they fit into the module and that, which is a good thing, considering the exam is today. Um, so, if all the modules in the future are kind of based on this theory and rely on this, it's going to be a wild ride, and I'm going to battle. But, yeah, no, it's been, been really interesting, and I've enjoyed this course a lot. The one thing about the engineering uh, modules in particular, as opposed to like the maths modules run by the maths department, uh, is the electronics department really does lecture well, and they really do uh, make this complicated theory and that eventually understandable, and there's a lot of resources in that to help with that, and so I'm appreciative of that. I also must really give credit to Dr. Palanchuk and Dr. Van Beek for like the efficiency of the module on that. Um, we have, use a system called EPS, and it's you know it's designed by the whole engineering department and that. But when your lecturers use your online systems properly to distribute notes and memos and test results. It really makes learning a lot easier. And so you see, all our uh, results for the module came out here, and all the memos were there uh, after testing it, and it made learning and relearning things a lot easier as the semester went on. So I appreciated that. 
uh, it's a good department and I definitely you know I've been chatting to some of my friends and that that are studying other degrees I definitely made the right choice in studying my degree because even though it's damn confusing and complicated and this maths might just be the death of me um, I'm enjoying learning more about it and applying it to the real world and so yeah it's exciting <sighs> all right three o'clock my test is in an hour got to walk to campus because my bike is at home mm, wish me luck um, I'm sure it'll be fine and I will see you later. Thank you for watching this really weird video about me talking about uh, ELI, Linear Systems, one of our most important modules that we've done this year. All right, see you later. <sighs> Spoiler alert, it was fucking difficult. Oh my God. Yes. That was another level of complexity and mathematics that I did not understand. I think I passed. I did a decent amount of work. I did a, I knew a huge amount of it, but some of those questions, yo, on the Fourier transform, mm-mm-mm, beyond me.